Hi everyone, thanks for watching my presentation. My name is Jessica Yin and I'm currently a senior undergrad in the Soft Machines Lab at Carnegie Mellon University. Today I'll be presenting Closing the Loop with Liquid Metal Sensing Skin for Autonomous Soft Robot Gripping in the 2020 Virtual IEEE International Conference on Soft Robotics, also known as RoboSoft. Soft robots are often limited in high-level decision-making and feedback control due to a lack of multimodal sensing capabilities and material architectures that tightly integrate sensing and actuation. However, the recent development of elastic multimodal sensing skins has created the opportunity for closing the loop in soft robotic systems. The question we are investigating in this work is, can a simple closed loop control strategy, such as a finite state machine, driven by multimodal sensor feedback, be used with a soft robotic system with low control authority to accomplish high-level tasks? Now, why is this question important? Progress in broader applications of soft robots relies on the development and implementation of autonomy and decision-making in soft robotic systems. With the capability for sensor feedback control, soft robots can begin to solve more complex problems and work towards levels of sophistication common in conventional rigid robotics. However, current limitations in multimodal soft sensing skins and soft electronics integration has resulted in sparse development of closed loop control for soft robots. The deformable and compliant bodies of soft robots that make them so compelling in applications in healthcare, human robot interaction, and bio inspired robotics have presented a significant challenge in the development of dynamic control algorithms. While the compliance of soft robots can negate the need for precise feedback control in interactions with the environment and delicate objects, sensor feedback is still necessary for higher level decision making. This figure from the paper Electronic Skins and Machine Learning for Intelligent Soft Robots is a great summary of recent work in the field. New developments in soft sensing technology in recent years have led to greater availability of sensing modalities in soft robots than ever before. Some examples of these sensors are shown along the y-axis, which is highlighted with the yellow outline. These sensors range from single modality strain, pressure, and deformation sensors to more complex distributed or multimodal sensors. Approaches to soft actuation are shown along the x-axis, which include pneumatic and chemical actuation. These actuation methods have been successfully applied to a variety of soft systems, including bio-inspired and locomotion robots. The next challenge is developing systems that integrate both soft sensors and actuators together. Some common strategies for integration are adhering soft sensing skins to the outer surface of the robot or embedding sensors directly into the robot body. Sensing skin and soft actuator integration can most frequently be seen in soft grippers and hands. However, it remains an open challenge to build a system that uses soft actuation and sensing together for high-level tasks. In this work, we present a sensor-based finite state machine for a soft sensorized gripper mounted to a four degree of freedom robot arm. To give a quick definition, a finite state machine is a simple control scheme that consists of a set of states with transitions between states directly determined by inputs. Closed loop control is demonstrated through tasks driven by multimodal sensor feedback. The three tasks accomplished by the system are scanning, grasping, and sorting. For scanning, a time of flight sensor is used. For grasping, the time of flight sensor and two pressure sensors are used. For sorting, the time of flight sensor, pressure sensors, and an inertial measurement unit, or IMU, are used. The tasks of scanning, grasping, and sorting are well suited to finite state machine control because they can be distinctly divided into a relatively small number of states and directly governed by sensor data. With the sensor feedback, the system can also detect and respond to external perturbations that interfere with task completion. The system consists of a four degree freedom rigid robot arm and the sensorized gripper that has the sensor skin with the sensors mentioned in the previous slide, time of flight pressure and IMU, and onboard processing. The gripper is actuated by shape memory alloy springs, abbreviated as SMA and actuates between binary open and closed states. And it's not shown in this figure, but there's a computer that hosts the finite state machine for decision-making and further sensor data processing. Here's a closer look at the multimodal sensor skin, which uses liquid metal traces and rigid microelectronics, as well as two soft resistive pressure sensors. A similar sensor skin design, fabrication, and characterization was previously presented in the paper, Liquid Metal Microelectronics Integration for Sensorized Soft Robot Skin in IROS in 2018. The multimodal sensor skin used in this work has components that were selected to provide relevant sensing for gripping tasks and placed in locations according to their sensing functionality. The sensors and components are labeled in this picture. We have the two pressure sensors in blue, the time apply sensor in purple, an IMU in red, the processor in orange, and a flat flexible cable for data and power transfer in green. 
This hybrid sensor skin remains functional under mechanical deformation and provides the reliability and digital capabilities of commercially available microelectronics while minimizing interference with the compliance of the soft gripper. This is a brief overview of the fabrication technique used to make the sensor skin. First, the PCV layout is patterned with a laser on sweated copper on 10 to 1 PDMS film. Next, E-gain is selectively deposited onto the copper traces. Then the components are placed. And finally, HCL vapor aligns the components and the circuit surface is sealed with 10 to 1 PDMS. Further details can be found in the paper, E-gain metal interfacing for liquid metal circuitry and microelectronics integration. This figure shows the sensor skin integrated with the soft gripper, which is made of Dragon Skin 30. The sensor skin is cut to the appropriate shape and adhered to the soft gripper using silicone epoxy, and when adhered, the sensors are in relevant locations. For example, the pressure sensors are located on the inner fingertips of the gripper, and the time of flight is located in the palm of the gripper. More details on the gripper design and further characterization of this soft gripper and sensor skin can be found in the 2018 IRIS paper. With the integrated sensors, the system can now do some useful things like object localization. This is a demo video, and these three plots on the right will show a live stream of the sensor data from the gripper. At the top, we have a data stream from the pressure sensors. In the middle, we have data from the time of flight sensor, and on the bottom, we have data from the IMU. The x-axis outlined in red is time and corresponds with the video. Object localization only requires the time of flight sensor. The plot and the sensor location on the gripper is outlined in blue. It is placed parallel to the scanning surface. With the sensor in this location, it can measure the distance to the surface below it. The system performs a 2D sweep over the workspace in six uniform rows at constant height. The time of flight data is used to create a depth map of the workspace, which is then used to calculate the length, width, height, and center of mass of the object. In these two figures, data from time of flight scans are plotted. On the left, we have a scan of a king chess piece, and on the right, we have a scan of nail polish. The system output for each desired parameter is shown below the plot, which is size, location and g-coordinates for the robot arm, height, and height classification. The height of the object is classified as either short or tall, which is just from using a threshold value. For grass detection, all three sensor modalities are used. The pressure sensors on the inner fingertips and the corresponding plot are outlined in orange. And the IMU and the corresponding plot is in green. It's hidden behind the white cable at this angle. In this demo, the system has located the object in the workspace and will attempt to grasp it. The SMA springs are activated by applying current, and after detecting a successful grasp, the object is transported to the target location and is then released. The data from a grasp and release of an object from the gripper is shown in these plots for the three modes of sensing. The sensors trend in the expected direction and corroborate with each other to detect that the object has been grasped in the time spans highlighted. This is a block diagram of the finite state machine. The colors red, green, and blue highlight where different modalities of sensors are used in the decision-making process. The geometry of the blocks classifies what the system is doing analysis, action, or making decision. For decision making in the finite state machine, a threshold scheme is used for all sensor data. The threshold values can be adjusted for different environments and object data sets. A qualitative comparison of sensor data can be seen in the plots on the right of each figure with the x-axis of zero and time dependent. One example of how the threshold scheme is used is in object detection, which uses the time of flight sensor. After the system has calculated where the object is, it moves to the location and checks if it is there by measuring the distance to the nearest surface. On the left, the distance is smaller because the object is present, while on the right, the distance is greater because the object is not present. This is reflected in the differences in sensor data. Another example of how thresholding is applied in the system is in perturbation detection. By comparing the data for each sensor, pressure, time of flight, and IMU, it is clear to see that the system was perturbed and the multimodal sensing data shows good agreement on the time step that the system was perturbed in, which is highlighted in orange. Using this threshold scheme, the finite state machine can make high-level decisions with the sensor data. We'll start with the demo of the object detection, where I move the object from the expected location. The system recognizes that it is no longer there and goes back to the scanning state. 
Next is grasp success, or hold down the object to prevent the gripper from picking it up successfully. The system recognizes that it has not grasped the object and attempts another grasp. For perturbation detection, I remove the object during transport, and the system goes back to the scan state to try to find it. For sorting, the system has correctly classified that the king chess piece is a tall object and places it on the left. Finally, the system has correctly classified that the rook chess piece is a short object, lowers the gripper more than it would for a tall object to pick it up, and places it on the right. The performance of the finite state machine through the tasks of autonomous and unperturbed object localization, classification, grasp, transport, and release was characterized. This table shows the success rate over 25 unperturbed trials with the short object, which is the rook chess piece, and a tall object, which is the king chess piece. Object localization was found to be particularly successful with a success rate of 100% for both objects. In conclusion, we demonstrate the functionality of a soft robotic system consisting of a finite state machine, sensorized soft gripper, and robot arm that is robust to perturbations that interfere with grasping, transport, and sorting tasks able to detect, classify, and locate objects within its scanning workspace, and capable of sorting a sequence of objects based on height. To address our research question, we found that simple control strategies from conventional robotics can successfully be applied to soft robots with multimodal sensing and low control authority. This is a simple control strategy that doesn't really rely on the dynamics of a material, as the gripper finger behavior does not matter much between open and close. The gripper was designed to behave this way, and this was key to the success of this control strategy. The multimodal sensors were focused entirely on exteroceptive sensing and could be used with the controller focused solely on high-level decisions. For future work, we would like to explore the addition of new sensing modalities, expanding to different soft robotic systems, and testing with a larger variety of objects. And of course, a huge thank you to Dr. Tess Hellbreckers and Professor Kamal Majidi, co-authors of this paper, as well as our sponsors from the National Oceanographic Partnership Program and the National Science Foundation. Also, thanks to the CMU Robotics Institute and the CMU Mechanical Engineering Department. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at jessian at seas.upenn.edu. I'll be graduating from Carnegie Mellon this semester with my bachelor's degree and starting my PhD at the University of Pennsylvania this fall. So please direct any communication to my UPenn email address. Thanks again for watching.